You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for July 2nd, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we are recording this one day early because tomorrow we have a birthday to celebrate. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Yes, if you're listening to this on July 2nd, uh, it's Middle Child's 19th birthday. It Hooray! Is. It is. And I have aged a thousand years. So oh, honestly. Yeah. No, she, she's great. She's just great. She's great. She's off to college in the fall and she's very excited. Yeah. It's wonderful to see her excited in that way because she can be somewhat um, stoic, yes. I would say, from time yes. to time. She's very, she takes the world very seriously she does. and uh, is a vegan and an activist in a lot of things. And uh, is her mother's daughter in a lot of ways. <laughs> and it's fine. But She's it's fine. 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 It's fine. We love her. So, and I want her to have a very, very happy birthday. And so you, you, we are constantly searching for that magic key that will open the conversation beyond a single verb or adjective. Yeah. Um, it, and then it's suddenly... We hear all about her day, which is wonderful. Yeah, which is just great. Yeah, with both with both girls, that's yeah. the way it is. It's teenage yeah. girls, yeah. you know, and you can open the floodgates, and then they want to tell you about their lives, which and is that's fun. Just great. And the rest of the time, it's uh. Yeah. We also <laughs> we also uh, uh, sent another uh, beloved family member on, along its way. Little Bertha uh, was turned over to a, a friend of the family. Yep. Uh, little Bertha is a is a Ford Freestyle that came into our life after my Camry was drowned in a flood. And it's a very old car. It handles just great. It does what you want it to do. It's been to the moon and back nine times, so it's got a gazillion miles on it. It's three years older than this podcast, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, don't, they literally don't make them anymore. They don't make them anymore, those um, Ford Freestyles. But they were good little cars. They were. And it it's had its ups and downs, but it's on an upswing. And we were able to find a home for it with a friend of our family, friend of Junior Dude, who really needed a ride. And yeah. this, this slid right into his lifestyle, and we had a fun time going back and forth with the DMV because yeah. <laughs> neither of us fill out the forms correctly, and they're real picky about that. They so, are. But another another empty nest moment where we, we bid right. farewell to little Bertha. Well, and it is one of Junior Dude's best friends that got the yeah. car. And that's the car that you taught kids to drive. how to drive I did. on I that taught, car. taught so. all the kids how to drive on this car, and it, it was their primary source of transportation for a while. For a while, for a yeah. While. Anyway, we are blessed this week. Uh, earlier this week, we did a interview and sat down for a few minutes with John Amato, who is the vlog father of CrooksAndLiars.com. And uh, we're just going to go right into that interview because uh, we did that first. Crooks and Liars came into existence as a video podcast, a video website before YouTube existed. That's right. It was absolutely the only place you could get liberal clips of news programs at all. And plus excellent writing and a wonderful staff. So we owe an awful lot to John. He's been doing it for 17 years now. So Right, right. And we still have our own video server and provide the embed code for all of the videos that we post. Mm -hmm. So uh, those don't have takedown notices or aren't deleted <laughs> by, you know, conservatives or canceled. That is interesting that Right Wing Watch, you know, went through hell this week. Yeah, they did. Their YouTube channel was canceled and then for spreading disinformation, but they were just clipping right wing people. Right. That's all they were doing. And uh, they were reinstated, so I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, our our videos are not taken down; they're there for and and later in the show, you're gonna be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna see how grateful I am that those videos are still up. All right, here's our chat with John Amato. We're very proud at the Professional Life Podcast to have as our guest today John Amato, who is my boss over at CrooksAndLiars.com. Hello, John. Hello, Fran. Good to be with you. And he's Drift Glass on the podcast. I'm yeah. just the Drift Glass on the podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you could call me OG Blogger. 
There you go. There you go. The original OG blog is like drip blog. <laughs> <laughs> the OGs. So I'm going to jump right in and I want to ask John a question that I've asked you, Drift Glass, about this infrastructure plan and this two two tier thing. Isn't do you guys think this is just a big gift that Biden's giving the Republican Party? Because that's how I feel about it. It's like you're preventing billboards from going up that say Senator X didn't pay for this bridge. We're letting them pay for the bridges and the roads and say they voted for that when we could pass the whole thing with reconciliation. Yeah, you know. Why are we doing this? Well, unfortunately, because, you know, we have a couple of senators that um, don't act like like the other side. So they think they, they have this false belief of some sort of bipartisan fairy makes everything better. And mm. if we don't, you know, invite the bipartisan fairy in, then it just doesn't work as well. Even though they, no. the Republicans have proved to be the most obstructionist and like low down, they're not even a political party anymore. Mm-hmm. All they are is just performance grievance art. So mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it is a joke. I, I, you know, it's hard to say what's eventually going to happen, right? Because again, you know, Mitch McConnell didn't have to deal with the faction, you know, that said, I'm sorry, we're not doing tax cuts. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, we right. just can't do right. tax cuts unless we get Democrats voting on it, right? <laughs> so, right, right. So it's a different, you know, it's a different situation uh, that, that obviously the Democratic Party has to look at. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know that today uh, Manchin was on basically saying, well, he's OK doing the second part with reconciliation. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, is, you know, who knows? Uh, I, you know, we can only hope for the best. We do have time. And I know that they understand the timing of this. They need to get stuff done. And, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, cinema, I think. I think we saw her polling in the state is pretty good. Yeah. So, so she, it's not the same reason. I mean, they were talking today that Mark Kelly and Kristen Cinema poll essentially the right. same. Okay. But people really, really like Mark Kelly and people are going along with Cinema because they hope that she's going to be the 51st vote, you know, or the 50th vote. Right. Well, you know, what I heard um, through some sources that know Manchin and his family supposedly quite well is mm-hmm. that he is a committed Democrat. He's not going to switch parties. Like that whole thing, well, we, we can't, you know, we, we can't criticize him or put any mm-hmm. pressure on him because then he's just going to go to the other side. It's that mm-hmm. he does have mm-hmm. these beliefs and um, and so he's sticking to them, but it's not a question of, well, you know, if you mean to me, I'm running to the other side. Right, uh, with right. cinema, now, how you got, I haven't looked at Mark Kelly's um, you know, polling or, or a statute at this point, because I do worry mm-hmm. about his seat coming up in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I saw was that the Mark Kelly stuff was, he was polling at like 56, I think. And cinema was close to that in terms of mm-hmm. approval ratings. They're both in the fifties. Well, I guess which for side- Arizona is pretty good for a Democrat. Right. Well, you once know. the cyber ninjas take over the state legislature, Ugh. Well, and there's a lot of Republicans that are totally embarrassed by that in Arizona. Mm -hmm. You know, we we have family in Arizona who are married to Republicans, I think. I think there are a couple of Republicans in that side of the family, sort of. There there are a couple on on distant third cousin once removed, but yeah, who are now cops in Santa Barbara, I think. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and they're just, but they Uh, realize how stupid this is. Well, it's also the framing, the the way this is being framed. Because I listen to, you know, I listen to anti-Trump podcasts, never Trump podcasts. I listen to, I listen to all, as much media as I can get a hold of. And this is being framed as anything you give the Republicans is a good thing. And this whole idea of a second tier is like, and then that's just a sop thrown to the Bernie Sanders wing of the party. As if that's a bad thing, mm-hmm. as if, you know, mm-hmm. paying for all the other things that need to get paid for is somehow just horrible and misspent funds. And like, why did Joe Biden even do this? This is such a stupid idea. You know, you had this great little bill that didn't spend a lot of money, but two trillion is a lot of money. And and now you, you want to throw a sop to AOC. And I guess he has to do that because you know how Democrats are. And the whole framing of the question is Republican demands are reasonable. Democratic demands that represent the overwhelming majority of the party are right. somehow ridiculous and right. unfair and need to be, you know, tabled because they're just children pissing away money. And 
the and there's and there's no broker for this conversation. There's no one in the room right. saying, "Shut the fuck up." You gave away two trillion dollars <laughs> for no goddamn good reason, and you all said that's a great idea. <laughs> now you've the disinvestment of the Republican Party in the in the United States for fifty years has caught up with us. Everything's falling apart. Airports suck. We need rural broadband. We need to pay people decent wages. All the shit you never wanted to do, now we're paying the price for that. So now we literally have to pay the price for that, and they don't want to hear that. That's why you don't have liberals in the middle of that conversation, because we'd bring up unpleasant shit like everything that happened prior to 2016. So Right, right. So John, John, how do how does all of that I think I think Drip West brings up a really good point, which is the voice of liberals. Oh yeah. And you run a website. I work for that website, Crooks and Liars, Voice of Liberal. You know, we we clip videos and talk about media and Republican Party all day long. How are we doing as liberal media? Right. Well, I think we're doing great um, under the circumstances, especially mm -hmm. every day on Fox. It's it's just how can we make Joe Biden sneezing a national crisis? Right. Right. Um, or if if uh, he tries to read something, he has dementia. Like if they just have to manufacture mm -hmm. everything, their entire right wing media going out to to a lot of people is that there is, you know, everything, no matter what it is, is just a national crisis, right? Everything's falling right. apart. It's being destroyed. You know, like you're, you know, you have a, I don't know if, it, if you're being funny about having a, a policeman in, in Santa Barbara, but right now the Santa Barbara is experiencing this crime wave. Oh my God, it's because of Joe Biden, you know, and they give percentages, but but percentage to what? Like, were there five murders and now there's seven? So suddenly that's a 20 or 40% increase in crime. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't mm -hmm. get any numbers. You just get weird percentages. And um, and so it's it's really insane what's going on there. And the fact that that um, the Democratic legislation is still so popular, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, for since Trump, I mean, before Trump, obviously, Drift Glass knows the history, of, you know, of this as well as you do and I do, which is, uh, you know, where evil socialists that drink, I don't know, grasshoppers on some golf course and, and you know, we're having Mai Tais and hating America and burning the flag. And, we, you know, we want to destroy everybody and, and turn your kids you know, you know, make 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 your, uh, you know, make your kids, your your male kids play on the girl sports team. I mean, just crazy, crazy stuff. And the fact that everything is still so positive as far as when it comes to legislation and the bills is is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have something to do with that. I believe so. I mean, um, yeah. you know, because with obviously as we've seen everything change on the internet. Right. I mean, there's all these different, mm -hmm. um, you know, at first there were no ads on any kind of website because it hadn't, you know, taken it off yet. And then there was blog ads mm -hmm. that like did some first party stuff. And then it just morphed and Google took over everything. Um, so mm -hmm. everything keeps changing in the way the media is transmitted online has changed dramatically. So, mm -hmm. so now, mm -hmm. I mean, how many, you know, progressive bloggers um, are around that used to be around? Whereas if you look at all these, uh, your favorite people, right? The Federalist, Benz, and all those guys. <laughs> they they get they basically are embarrassed and kicked off the internet, and then two three years later they turn up with millions of dollars and and just doing right wing propaganda. Mm -hmm. Where that doesn't mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. on on the left. And as far I'm not talking about left wing propaganda. I'm just talking about basic talk. You know, left wing or we would say mm -hmm. as they do center left voices out there are squelched. Right. Because we don't we right. don't have the billionaires and millionaires that they believe that all they have to do is is donate the candidates and their job is done. Right. 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 And what what about um, what's going on with Facebook right now? Because it seems like the conservatives are rigging the game. At yeah, Facebook. they figured the algorithm out, and then now they know how to just push everyone else out of the way. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and they must have had help doing it because Ben Shapiro is no rocket scientist. He's just a, so, <laughs> right. I mean, the guy, I guess, what did he make his name that he was like a still a virgin or something after college? Yeah. I mean, like that, mm -hmm. like who cares? But supposedly <laughs> that, that made him, you know, oh, he's 21 years old. You know, they try to give him the Tim Tebow, right? The Tim Tebow yeah. treatment, right? But Tebow was a Heisman winning, you know, national championship athlete, quarterback, right. an incredible athlete, right? Where this guy's just just basically, uh, you know, trying to own the libs 
So then, you know, and then he marries into, you know, I, I don't know what his family's finances were, but I know he married into wealth as well. And and suddenly the top, you know, if you look at Facebook's top pages, um, littering the top pages are his radio show. I guess it's a radio show. Mm-hmm. And um, also you get the Dan Bonginos and you get the well, the Franklin Grahams mm-hmm. and you get, it's littered with all right wing sites. So you know, it's more than someone just figured it out. You know, it's like, you know, I, I imagine Facebook people. I mean, this is my own. I have no, this isn't proven um, where right. they had to get help. And the fact that, you know, Tucker Carlson's The Daily Caller became a fact checker for Zuckerberg. For right. Facebook. Right. For Facebook yes. is. Right. And we see, you know, Tucker Carlson, what he's doing every day, which is uh, either having a white power hour um, dismissing, you know, vaccines, going to this crazy herd immunity, anti-masks, and now suddenly the NSA is spying on the show uh, or Biden to to get him canceled. I I just feel as though Tucker Carlson is continually losing a bet, which is he's got a bet with one of his frat boy buddies that this is my perception is he's got a bet with one of his frat boy buddies that he can get kicked off the air. And he keeps not getting kicked off the air because ramping it up is part of Fox's business model right. now. They realize if they don't ramp right. it up with the crazy, that their audience will walk away like they walked away from Trump on Saturday. You know, it wasn't crazy enough Saturday night in Ohio. And people started to leave because they weren't being incited to tear down buildings. Well, and there's, I mean, you've got like Lachlan Murdoch calling Tucker Carlson brave. Um, right. <laughs> you know, and it's it's this weird juxtaposition of this, of a corporate slash libertarian slash capitalist machine mm-hmm. that doesn't give a shit about anything, that doesn't give it, that cares about profit and advancing its, its whatever, whatever influence it has. Nothing else. It's, it's, it's like Jaws. It's a perfect eating machine. It doesn't care about you. Right. It wants to eat you. And if you're in its way, it'll eat you. Attaching itself to this, mob of white supremacist assholes. I just kind of picture Tucker Carlson talking to his audience, getting into a decontamination shower, showering it all off, and then going and have drinks with Lachlan Murdoch and and Bill Maher. Mm-hmm. Because those are the guys who's like, none of this affects me. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, the whole the whole MAGA movement could fall into the ocean and die. Wouldn't affect them at all. And and democracy could be burned to the ground. Wouldn't affect them at all. So they don't give a shit what how he gets the job done as long as he does the job. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and, and Lachlan actually admitted that Fox News is an opposition party to yeah. the president. So when you have, you know, like for all of Roger Ailes' sins, um, as far as his media acumen, you know, he knew he built a flashy, shiny product to tapped into the conservative mail. And I mean, when you look at it now, it's it's sort of a circle jerk of the same people, right? So mm-hmm. they've they've kicked off basically almost all the democratic voices on the network, right. and then what they they started the Fox Nation website. So then what they do is there'll be a breaking story, right? The you know in Florida the condo collapse, right? 150 people missing, and then and that's and let's bring on Tommy Lair to explain it to us. <laughs> Structural engineer Tommy Lair, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. and then they so then they just bring on people from the other shows to and and then they actually, you know, they uh they advertise them in their little Chiron in the bottom right coming up in 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, coming up, it's Pete Hexen. Dan Bongino. Right. Dan right. Bongino. Right. You know, unfiltered. Like and they just rotate them. I mean, Diamond and I'm surprised like Diamond and Still finally got kicked off, but um, right. you, you know, because they were just so bad. But um, so there's never any, you know, like a, well, the good thing we I used to like about uh, Shepard Smith's show is that he didn't put on really any activists. Uh, you know, he didn't use the staple of of, uh, of Trump crazies, but he would right. put on more uh, like he'd have reporters from the Wall Street Journal, but they weren't they weren't opinion guys. And they would just right. basically at least explain what the how they saw things, mm-hmm. you know. Now, mm-hmm. when you go to mm-hmm. MSNBC and CNN, there's never a left wing, uh, you know, a center left voice coming from a, a left wing think tank, um, you know, a rarely Mother Jones from anywhere that's on the left. What they do, they put the same journalists on. Most of them still, you know, consider themselves reporters. 
So yes, when Trump says there's very fine Nazis on, on both sides, of course the journalists are going to say that's crazy. But when you go over to Fox, they just have the same people basically saying that any liberal that you know is trying to destroy your family and your way of life. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's very frustrating what's the, now the cable TV uh, landscape is. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to start trying to work and, and maybe I have some PR people to, st- to start, go, you know, start pushing back on this. Like, um, you know, you need some other valid opinions as opposed to the same, you know, AP reporter and Washington Post reporter that you like that you're mm-hmm. friends, you well, know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. all of the uh, all all of the Bush administration um, dead enders who are now permanent additions to MSNBC. You know, you can go right down the list of all like, my God, is this really is like a family reunion of the second Bush administration. Everything, everybody from the RNC chair to the head of comms to the head of programming to, you know, Matthew Dowd was the guy who got him elected a second time. He was his campaign right. manager the second time. And right. it's and they're all, you know, they're all on message about how bad the Republican Party is post 2016. But but there's no liberal telling them, look, it's important to understand history. And the party didn't spring <laughs> into existence overnight. It came from the place where you all you all planted the seeds for this. And there's nobody on that network who's willing to say that. And, and mm-hmm. by the way, you're not alone. There's um, a little podcast you might've heard of called Cro- uh, Crooked Media. Uh, is that Pod Save America? A couple of young guys, right. I, I, they, they're, they're doing good work. They're, they're out there. They're, they're, you know, they're, I'm trying to give them as much traffic as possible because you know they need the help. No, please. But, but a couple of episodes ago, they were talking about how, look, shut up about how Democrats suck at messaging. Democrats' messages are fine. We don't have a megaphone like Republicans do. We don't have. There is no liberal Fox News. There is no big shouty machine. There is no. Bun- there is no network of liberal radio stations across the country. There are no interlocking liberal think tanks that are all funded by crackpot left wing billionaires. There's nothing like that. So we can't push the message out, and that's the thing that does drive me crazy, which is all of the shit I hear from. The never Trumpers. This is why you need to write checks to the Lincoln Project. You know, this is frankly this yeah. is why this is why wealthy liberals are writing checks to the Lincoln Project because they don't want to build a network. They want to outsource it to somebody who will say mean things about Donald Trump, and that's not a network. That's an ad agency. If you want a network, right. you actually have to build one, and that's why Crooks and Liars is invaluable because it really is one of the only like big throw weight sites that can actually penetrate um, deep enough. <laughs> to maybe make a difference. And I tend to agree with the, the uh, crooked media guys that the problem is not the message. The problem is we can't shout it loud enough because our investors are not willing to do that. Right. And look, the first left-wing radio station, right, Air America. Now, you know, obviously the guy that was basically started and funded it turned out not to be a very good person business-wise and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But as soon as that network quickly Right. We got a U.S. senator yep. elected from that network yeah. and one of the top rated cable hosts, Rachel Maddow, who we, we were the first people to actually push, promote her to get her on the Today Show. Yep. She wasn't even on the Today mm-hmm. Show. And we pushed getting her on the Today Show, which led to her show. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, what happened to that network? The corporate that went away pretty quick because they realized with this network, um, you know, the, the effect that it had so quick. That you know what I mean? How many you know you didn't see Rush Limbaugh becoming a senator? And, and I mean they've been doing this since 1986. Mm-hmm. In a very short time, we got a senator and we got the top-rated TV so you know host, and that all of a sudden yep. went belly up really quick. Yeah, well I you know and, right. I used to right. live in Chicago, and, you would and think- you'd have to I'd have to walk a radio around my condo to pick up you know WXRT. I'd have to, to the only liberal radio station anywhere in the Midwest, really. And you, it would if the wind is blowing, blowing the right way, you could hear it. But that's how it's like. It, it shouldn't be this hard. I should have four. If I'm uh, in a major media market, I should have four channels to choose from at least. And yeah, no, absolutely. You know, when you go to even like, and you would figure some rich person on the you know center left um, would say, "Well, there's an infrastructure with this Air America already. Right. I'll take it over." 
I mean, why is mm-hmm. Hugh Hewitt still around? Because who funded that, the, all them stupid radio stations, right? right? The Sinclair right. Yeah. or whatever they're called, right? Not Sinclair, yeah. but um, I forget what the uh, I forget what, what their radio like Clear Channel called, or Sable. something, yeah. Sable, Clear right? Channel, yeah. Uh, the witch, <laughs> yeah, the witch trial network. But um, it is like it's amazing that they just let it die. Where now you have an infrastructure. With re- proper financing, you actually put in actual real radio general managers and program directors, mm-hmm. and you could have built something really big as opposed to just letting it die. Well, and you had you know? people, and, mm-hmm. you had you had conservatives corporations buying liberal stations and turning them off, shifting their mm-hmm. programming to all Spanish, all sports. When there were already you know ten other sports stations, and it was okay, you've got a popular thing here; it's in the top three or four or five. And you're shifting it to a place where you're maybe going to be tenth in the market, and the answer is, well, we don't want to hear liberal voices on the air. We don't. We don't right. want to hear that. Mm-hmm. That is really screwing us up. So there was an aggressive and well financed campaign to mm-hmm. keep liberals shut up and shut out. And that's where blogging was this miracle, where you could hit publish and reach people, and suddenly there are voices out there. And then that sort of, you know, that that got swallowed. And then it, it, it's constantly trying to stay ahead of the blob that is gobbling up and shutting down uh, voices like yours, which is, frankly, pissing me off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One last topic I want to get to is, um, John, you wrote a post today about Jared Kushner, the idiot son-in-law, <laughs> <laughs> and, and his damage to the COVID project. And, and his incompetence in facing it. There's a lot of books coming out now about the Trump administration and how it failed, like after the mm-hmm. fact. And I'd like you to reflect on yeah, this, I mean, um, what's going on there. You know, there's a new book, Nightmare Scenario. Um, I forget the author's names. That's just that's just coming out. And it discusses really about uh, the, the pandemic in the response of the mm-hmm. Trump administration. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's got a lot of interesting uh, things, and in especially when you go back to the cruise ship, right, when, when people were infected on the cruise ship when this all began, and, and Trump is telling his advisors, well, you know, I don't want the numbers to go up. When he talks about the numbers about infected people, at that time it was very low. It was, I can't remember now, 15 or 10. Or, you know, he goes, well, mm-hmm. if they come, mm-hmm. it'll double the numbers. Don't we have Guantanamo Bay? You know, mm-hmm. and he was serious mm-hmm. that he didn't want these people to come back home, right? I mean, so he didn't want anybody get it, to get tested either, because well, a positive test would increase his numbers. I mean, that's the, whereas actually testing people, if he'd done that, he would have. He just thought they were bad numbers for him. You know, it's just his narcissism all over. Right, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With 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 Donald Trump, you can't treat him like a normal person, right? Because a normal person. Or a normal, uh, it, like, you know, a president, even if he doesn't share our views, would take a national health crisis and realize that there's 330 million people at risk of death, right? Mm-hmm. Infection, mm-hmm. destruction. Mm-hmm. And so they would work with the medical community and the power that they have within the federal government, then all, all hands on board. Instead, immediately, he was worried about his reelection a year from then. And, and it's like, you can't govern a health crisis by worrying about numbers. And, and he's so, so nar- such a narcissistic buffoon that he just couldn't relate to the fact that if I actually do a good job with this, I will be celebrated for it. You know, like, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, there's always in almost every presidency, there's some sort of a crisis, whether you're overseas mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. what have you. And you know, this was, uh, you know, Donald's and, um, and the orange Julius, you know, spit the bit and really just yep. worried about himself. Yep. When you, you know, you read about um, the, some of the other things with Jared, uh, again, the, one of the major problems is Trump, like if someone tells him something that he disagrees with, then he just kicks him out. Like, right. it was if they, mm-hmm. like, so First, it was supposed to be uh, Mike Pence was supposed to be in charge of the virus, right? And, right? and as the task force. And then suddenly, Dr. Debbie with an I, not an IE, um, Debbie with an I was supposed to take over. And but then Fauci became so popular with the American people, Trump couldn't fire him, right? And so mm-hmm. then, and then you have Jared Kushner coming in, who's thinking, well, I can do this better, so I'll start like a shadow task force. And then you have Mark Short, who's who's uh, you know, Pence's right hand man, more worried about mm-hmm. politics 
And it's like, so then the private sector doesn't know what's happening. So there was one thing where, where right. Kushner, it, it talks about in the book, where uh, Kushner decided we should use like drive through testing facilities. And so he diverted, you know, many testing kits, which basically put a two week delay on, on testing for average Americans, which then the, the, the virus, you know, grew exponentially from there. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's mind boggling, but, um, but we, we've covered this administration on a daily basis. It's, it's amazing that we're all of us aren't in a mental institute yeah. Um, yeah. having to deal yep. with like the craziness. Um, and then the alt, you know, the alternative facts and then the rewriting of everything he says by all the right wing media, even that's not what he really meant, you know. You know, they didn't mean mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. But what did he mean? What did he just say? But that's not really what he meant, you know. Um, and it's it's horrifying. Uh, so I'm, that's one of the books I'm probably going to get because, um, mm-hmm. I mean, we covered this pandemic. We're all home more than we like to. Yep. And um, still, mm-hmm. when you read also about how actually sick he was, um, right. you know, as opposed to yes. what they, uh, you know, I guess I wouldn't expect any administration to let on you know, at that point, sort of, okay, what is he doing? But you can't have medical professionals out there lying. You just say, we're not sure, you know, right. but, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the guy was in bad shape and, you know, and, I, well, and they did nothing to prepare Pence or his staff for what might happen if Trump just died in the hospital. I mean, he was, he was really seriously ill. Oh yeah. And, I, uh, they didn't, they didn't, Pence wasn't part of the administration. He was out there someplace and used as an accessory when needed, right. he but was not the, part uh, of a team. He was the evangelical right. Uh, link, right? So yeah. since, since right. they all love he Pence, was, he's He was God. the useful tool. Right. But, and this, yeah, this vain right. hope that, that being struck down by this disease would somehow turn Donald Trump into a, you know, decent human being human being like, that's ridiculous <laughs> because if you think about the entire four years and all the lying about the covid numbers especially this, this is and and this is a guy who knows how to do two things he's a new york real estate scumbag and a reality tv star what do new york real estate mm-hmm. deflate the numbers lower the numbers cheat the audit and then you win it's not like it's going to come back to bite me or things will go bad right. if i just lie about the numbers I get away with it. And then when, when crisis comes, you just move the actors around on stage, fire some people, hire some people from central casting, make sure all your generals are bald and say, sir, a lot. Cause it's all just TV. It doesn't really matter. Right. It doesn't mm-hmm. affect people's lives. Thank you for, thank you for your service. It's an honor serving yeah. you. It's, it, I mean, those round tables were puke worthy, oh. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the idea that Trump considered, uh, using the federal government to combat the pandemic and outrage and outrage. And he wanted everybody fired that, that, that pushed that forward. I mean, because yeah. again, it makes him look bad. It's like, it should be the States. Mm-hmm. You can't, I mean, it's just insane. What we see now, as we see where we are with COVID, it, it's all the anti-vaxxers and the red state people mostly that, that haven't been vaccinated. So Fox news goes, well, you know, President Biden won't meet his 70% threshold that he had hoped for on July 4th, right? But yeah, because the Republicans, mm-hmm. you know, on the red states are the ones that aren't getting the shots are all there. That's the amazing thing. Yeah. How fast and, and the Tucker's in- the one telling them not to do it. Tucker and Laura Ingram every night in primetime are telling them not mm-hmm. to get it. I, so I mean, yeah. it's a miracle when you see how competent people in leadership, how quickly that that the the, uh, the vaccines were distributed and gotten into people's arms yeah. and became available. Right. If 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 right. if Trader Trump was still in office, he would have been like, well, you know, Gavin Newsom has to kiss my boot before I give Col- right. I give California the Pfizer. You know, they they can wait right. for the J and J when that's ready. But you know what? I'm going to make sure Mississippi and Georgia. You know, not Georgia now. He hates Georgia, right? But yeah. Florida, Florida, right? Florida, Florida will yeah, get it yeah, first. Yeah, for mini yeah. Trump. So it, it, it yeah, would have been yeah. such a nightmare um, that at this point, there'd probably be 20 percent of the country that was vaccinated yeah. at this point. Right. You know, right. so it is, yeah. Yeah. you know, it is what it is. Um, we just keep up, uh, you know, doing what we do. Not to mention, what about infrastructure week? <laughs> would we have an infrastructure week? Yeah. No. No, 
Yeah, well, because, well, basically Don Jr., Eric, and and Jared would then run the task force on infrastructure week, yeah. and then basically oh line up the contractors. You know, and there'd be no bid contracts. And the, and the there'd be no contracts. Yeah. You know, no bidding process. And yeah. uh, you know, it's it's really. I got to tell you, election night was really difficult. I've never felt stress like that, especially early on, yeah. you know, because, and I, we know better, right? We know yeah. that with all the mail-in ballots and, and all the, and, and since Republicans refuse to count those ballots early, right, right, which would have then ended, it, it would have been over that night. Um, when I saw, right. I forget what right. time it was, six or seven, when Trump was in the lead in like right. swing states, because, because they had, Call you know they they'd only counted you know Republican districts right live ballots from Republican districts that same day ballots yeah uh, you know I I, I I can't believe my nerve damage just didn't rip out of my body <laughs> I yeah. was that stressed you know and I had to put on you know and I was talking to Cara Lee right our our uh, managing editor and it's like I you know I know it's happening it, it's it's just my, I'm hitting the floor just seeing Trump in the lead even briefly it's just like just right. look at the board. You know, and actually, because Karnacki drives me crazy, right? By the way, now Steve Karnacki, you go to sports nights, you know, football night in America, there's Steve Karnacki on the board. You go to watch the Belmont, there's Steve Karnacki giving you the fucking odds of a horse race. Getting on the ponies. You know, that I, I went over, like Chuck Todd did a much better job on the election board. And um, and, and back then, that's what brought hit elevated him hmm. but uh so then i went over to john king and he actually did a really slow good job and explained it right. all and after i had seen that it just you know even though and again even though mm-hmm. we know better and yep. we know how the votes are going to be counted it's still that whiplash effect of of like um you know we're, tremendous all gonna, stress. You know, we're not gonna this country is not gonna dig out of this pandemic anytime soon if he's in power so yeah mm-hmm. yeah well, what what are, what are your thoughts about the midterms if, as as a as a final question? <laughs> well, I mean, historically, you know, the the the, the party that's in the Oval Office loses seats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we'll just have to see. I think we have a lot of good stuff to run in twenty twenty two ad wise to target a lot of people as far as what they voted for mm-hmm. and what they did and, mm-hmm. and how they're behaving. And also, look, you know, the economy is roaring back. So we have a, a lot of positive news mm-hmm. moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's I, and I'm trying not to think about it at this point. Yep. Because that, that you know, it's it's too hard to foresee in the future. It really is. I mean, back in 2007, you know, Rudy Giuliani was the presumptive Republican right. candidate for president. Yeah. Right, How and the he was winning all the polls. Yeah. <laughs> and then after the second, I don't know, the second or third primary, he was dusted. Yeah, he yeah. was gone. Yep. You know, so too much stuff can happen. You know, I mean, um, yeah. I like how some Democratic candidates, and and I admire Crooks and Liars and you, John, because we at Crooks and Liars do not get involved in Democratic primaries. We've made a policy of that, that we support the Democrat once they receive the nomination. And that's how right. you do it. Mm-hmm. And it, apart from my local congressional district, which eventually I will pick a Democrat to vote for for my primary because I vote in that primary. I don't get involved in Democratic primaries and picking people because whoever it is, is the one I'm going to support. But um I like these Democratic Senate candidates who are simply promising, I'm going to be the 51st vote. I'm going to be the one right. who turns it over. And and it really is a game of we've got to, you know, mansion proof and cinema proof the Senate. That's what we got to do. So, And that worked for Scott Brown the other way. Remember, Scott Brown ran on, right. I will be the vote right. to get rid of Obamacare. Right, right. And right. if if you, and this is something that, that um, I want to, study some more because I'm not I'm not fully up on it, but Rachel Bittacoffer's super PAC, which is don't run on specific issues necessarily. You run against the GOP brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, run right. against the Republican Party is terrible. All candidates are awful. If you vote for this guy, you're voting for fascism. And right. that should be your thrust. You should run against the party because she says, as quite rightly so, Republicans have been running against the Democratic brand for 40 years. Yeah, that that's really 
the brand that they created in right. their heads. The boogeyman. As being anti-family, whatever, right? Like the Democratic wonks, you know, they, they want to argue with, uh, you know, well, listen, 58% against 47% and 32% against 15%. And, you know, the numbers of the demographics. No, these people are actually white supremacists, right, that, that mm-hmm. want to turn the country into a theocracy. And and actually uh, want an authoritarian leader mm-hmm. and have mm-hmm. no use for democracy as as we see these um, you know these ballot measures in states that pass by like wide margins and some of your legislator says I'm sorry um, we can't do this because people will lie to it's like what are you talking about the, the, that's what a ballot measure is for the state votes on it right. and that's done deal and they're refusing to then in- install them so. Right. They have no use for actual democracy nope. at all, and nope. this is what they actually have become. And uh, anyway, so I, I, it's we are, li- you know, it's funny, right? When when uh, when 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 Fran first uh, started to to work for us, um, it was like August. I always remember she said, "Ah, it's I August." Remember That's this a- story. Weekend. It's like you know, don't wish. I go, no, man. Every day is like you know, it's, it's the best reality show because it's. It's about all our lives. Yeah. And then right after we talked, I think like the next day, it next was like day, the whole day. Next morning. Paul Rove. The Carl Rove, Rove quit. Like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I kept saying, I'm taking out, you know, Roy is going on vacation. I'm helping out. It'll be fine. It's summer. Congress is off, out of session. What can happen? And John just said, it's constant. You, you There will always be something bursting into the news cycle. Tell, I'm telling you. <laughs> never yeah. stops. And the it, next it morning, stopped. Carl Rove resigned. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, John. Thank you so much for being on our show. Thank we you, appreciate John. Thanks for you. having me. And CrooksandLiars.com. They're in the middle of a fundraiser. Go over to CrooksandLiars.com. Uh, mm-hmm. Support liberal media. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon, I hope. Absolutely. Anytime. All right. Thanks. Bye. Drift Glass. Blue Gal. Because we had the John Amato interview, we're, we're uh, abbreviating our part of the show. And you have in our notes five minutes on anything you like. Yeah. Well, I had in, I had in my notes 20 minutes on David Brooks and the history of blogging. But my wife said I can't do that. Cause you I told do it, him no. Told me no. So we have abbreviated that. But I know that uh, uh, one of uh, the great, greatest celebrities, one of the most progressive, awesome, um, thought-provoking um, well-loved celebrities uh, of our time uh, snagged your attention this week, and you want to talk about her <laughs> just a little Which bit. Which one? Yeah. It's a question as to whether you're talking about Liz Cheney or Megan McCain, but I think you're talking about Megan McCain. I am. But you got five minutes either way, so just roll with it. <laughs> well, uh, Megan McCain is leaving The View as of the end of July. And I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that at all. Uh, however, um, it was such a Megan McCain moment in that she talked about herself for over eight minutes <laughs> on the yeah. show. Yeah. And so it gave me an opportunity to share both on Crooks and Liars and on Twitter my personal favorite Megan McCain moment, which is from 2009, where she interviewed Rachel Maddow. And uh, she was... Uh, Rachel Maddow was promoting her book at the time, the blowout book, the one about uh, the oil industry. And uh, this interview with Rachel Maddow is absolutely painful to watch because (laughs) Rachel Maddow is the best interviewer in the business. She's she focuses on her guests. She makes sure she gets the facts right. And then she has a conversation, but it is absolutely focused on the expertise of the guest. That's right. And she leaves her ego at the door and uh, ha- has a very pleasant demeanor and people feel very comfortable talking to her. And she does her homework. And she does her homework. Um, and really, Megan McCain is one of the worst interviewers on television because uh, it is her technique on The View to preface everything she talks about with a paragraph about herself and uh, that is a way that she can hog screen time. Uh, it's a very narcissistic thing to do. And she's clearly a princess and gets to do that. And everyone's tired of it. Uh, I have heard rumors on the Twitter machine that 
uh, the ratings for the view went up when she was on maternity leave and that that may be one reason she's departing. Uh, she says she's quitting uh, and she has a baby and then she's got a husband who's Ben Dominic. So don't get me started about that. Um, <laughs> but let me read to you the opening question that Megan McCain asked Rachel Maddow. Now, if I had Rachel Maddow on the show, um, I'd have a question for it. I have several questions for her, but nothing like this. <laughs> All right. This is Megan McCain speaking to Rachel Maddow. And this is her first question to Rachel in 2019. You know, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to ask you. And I was thinking about it last night. And I have the unique experience that I briefly worked at MSNBC and Fox News for much longer. I obviously work here now. And I would like to say... <laughs> just a masterpiece really right uh -huh. there this, you know? this is this is transcript i'm not making this up this is like the and, actress studio stuff you know <laughs> tell us about your technique rachel and i would like to say it's interesting being in the underbelly of both places and conservative media dominates liberal media across the board in ratings their viewers are more lo loyal i know that you were friends with roger ailes and rachel maddow says mm-hmm and as I wrote in, in 2019, Rachel Maddow is genuinely a kind person to a fault. I would have interrupted and asked Megan about her dinner last night and what she wore to bed. And, you know, really put me in the scene where you were thinking about what you wanted to ask me, Megan, mm -hmm. because the way you paint your thought process is just fascinating. Tell me more about what you drink <laughs> before you think about stuff. <laughs> But uh, what Megan decided to ask Rachel Maddow after slurping her dinner in her pajamas and thinking about it and all her own unique experiences getting fired from various networks was, why does Rachel Maddow think conservative media, which is so popular and awesome, cleans her clock in the ratings on a regular basis? And here's how Ma Megan McCain phrased that. This is after she said, I know you were friends with Roger Ailes. What do you think was the key to conservative success and conservative brilliance in Fox News that they just lap you guys and still do? That's your own verbiage that you used one time on Bill Maher. So there she is congratulating herself for doing her homework. And Rachel Maddow did not say what I would have, have said, you know, oh, Megan McCain, you little bitch. <laughs> Uh, instead, Maddow took the question seriously and gave a careful analysis of media and audiences and uh, said, you know, the conservative media has set itself up as you can only come to us. Everybody else is against you. And she goes on to talk about how Roger Ailes, I didn't hang out with Roger Ailes, but I did talk with him about media. And he set it up as a political hammer to get conservatives First of all, get Republicans elected and also move the Republican Party to the right. And he succeeded. Um, so that was Megan McCain's finest hour as far as I was concerned. And she has continued on her her appearance today, again, was over eight minutes about herself. Uh, and uh, she's a truly narcissistic person. And I'm sure her goal is to wind up back on Fox with her husband. So well, sure. Yeah, that's, you know, you know, don't let the door hit you. Megan. But we also hear rumors that she's just going to travel the country, going from town to town for uh, about two years, uh, reminding everyone who her daddy is. Yeah. Who's my father? Right. Mm -hmm. My father, my father. All right. It's your turn to do five minutes on whatever you want to talk about. Okay. This this morning, Bob Seska, who, who's a friend of our podcast and a really good guy, mentioned on the Twitter machine, where I still peek over the top of the, uh, the transom, that the Republican Party and democracy are incompatible. Mm -hmm. And this put me in mind of something I wrote 15 years ago because it, it happens that way sometimes. It's mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be a jerk about it, but I do want to point out it's very important to me that this isn't really about me. I'm not this is not my Megan McCain moment. This is about mm -hmm. reminding not Bob, who knows this perfectly well, but mm -hmm. reminding people who might be listening or watching that the liberal critique of the GOP goes back a really long time. Mm hmm. And so I went and looked up. It was one of those things that uh, that Steve Gilliard cross posted to his blog. God, this really was, in in a lot of ways, a template for a lot of things I've written since then. And this is written in, back in two thousand seven. This is during the Bush administration. So I'm just going to read a couple of clips from it because it it tackles 
the broad themes that have always driven me crazy and and continue to do so that the continued um attacking the left for pointing shit that that if you if shit goes on it's going to end badly and then attacking the same liberals for pointing out and shit just went wrong because you didn't fucking listen to us Mm -hmm. and so we're doubly damned if we if we warn you the end is coming you'll call us traitors and liars and crackpots and lunatics and if we remind you after the fact that we warned you this was going to happen would you please stop listening to people who don't know what the hell they're talking about and start listening to people who do so I'm just some nobody in the middle of a cornfield. How is it that I outguessed everybody on Fox, every <laughs> leader in the Republican Party, every conservative commentator, every radio host, every Tom Friedman and David Brooks in there in the world? And it wasn't just me. It was the entire liberal blogosphere. So going back to those heady days of the Bush administration, um, I pointed out that the uh, the followers of the Republican Party are, are lunatics and mouth breathers who wage a fulminating 24-7 culture war. Yes, I was using the word culture war on everyone who's one inch to the left is Sean Hannity and one head smarter than Doug Fife. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Um, because in their universe, there's only one perfect eternal conservative now. There's no future. There's no tomorrow. There's no imaginary place down the time stream where consequences of doing immensely reckless, stupid things might catch up with us. And that's because there is no such place. People who persist in trying to apply logic or common sense or causality or reason or any variety of thinking that would generally not be associated with massive head traumas, multi-generational inbreeding, or gas sipping in some linear temporal way to show that decisions made in the perfect eternal conservative now might come with a terrible price down the road. Those people are obviously traitors and terrorist lovers. Because remember, we were all terrorist lovers back then. And our Mm -hmm. agenda is obviously borrowed from the Al-Qaeda agenda. Mm -hmm. For these people, there is no past. What happened five years ago or five weeks ago or five days ago, I can't believe I picked five years ago because that's when every fucking never Trumper, save one that I know of, insists this all started. It all started Mm -hmm. five years ago. This is a post from 15 years ago. Um, None of the four or five minutes ago isn't simply irrelevant. It doesn't exist except in cases of Democratic blowjobs and bad land deals. The past does not exist at all because if it did, it would be bursting at the seams with all kinds of scary stuff like dirty hippies talking about the future and being shouted down as traitors and terrorist lovers, like the leaders of the GOP lying over and over and over and over again. Um, Confident, shrill pronouncements about the turning of corners and even louder and shriller pronouncements about the disloyalty of those who point out that the makers of those shrill pronouncements have been wrong about every single fucking thing. So when the only product you have to sell is toxic and the only leverage you have on Monday is to move product, uh, to move product is people's fears and gullibility, then by Wednesday, you will come to require their willful ignorance. And by Friday, you will begin to demand it. And that is the terrible dynamic the GOP has roped themselves into. To survive, they have become the people of the lie, a band of corrupt, insane people who cannot, dare not tell the truth about anything anymore, anything. And for whom the past six years have been a a sifting process. In six short years, he said, writing in 2007, the right has compounded their own lives so many times with so much vigorish in human lives and suffering. They've held the military hostage for so long, alternately treating them like slaves and ass paper while cowering behind them, shrieking that anyone who speaks ill of the dear leader are terrorists, terrorist sympathizers who hate the men and women in uniform whenever they need to shut down honest debate. They've spent us so broke in treasure and reputation that I do not exaggerate when I say you can no longer be a good American and a good Republican. And I go on like that and on like that because I wrote a whole bunch of stuff back in those days. Um, And I'll just end with this. Because if the past were allowed to escape, it might track its muddy, bloody, impeachable footprints right back into the present and all over their nice, Lysol fresh, perfect, eternal conservative now. Now, just like those dirty hippies who years ago kept referencing some imaginary future and talking about consequences of invading Iraq. These dirty hippies who keep harping on the past and talking about evidence are obviously equally traitorous and equally bent on helping terrorists destroy America. What dirty hippie traitors refuse to comprehend is that time and truth are liberal illusion. There is no future full of pain and failure. There is no past full of lies and hypocrisy. There's only the perfect Republican present within which all words of the dear leader glow with a special light of truthiness and all decisions are glorious and sinless and perfect and pure and will be so forever and ever. 
because nothing exists outside of the perfect conservative now, which will always be perfectly and eternally exactly one Friedman unit long. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. written back when Steve Gilliard had a blog and was still alive, back when George mm -hmm. Bush was president. So you can perhaps understand my impatience with people who were part of that machine, part of that monstrosity, part of the lying machine who now crowd out liberal voices all over television and in the media and get really angry when people bring up the past. Because mm -hmm. what happened before 2016 is irrelevant and must not be discussed. Talking about Matthew Dowd being not just the Bush campaign manager in 2004 running a gay bashing carry slandering agenda, but being the king of both sides do it for the entire 2016 election, that is simply off the table. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. reason this troubles me so is every time we have allowed conservatives, whether they be actual Trump conservatives or whether they be Charlie Sykes, never Trump conservatives, every time we've allowed them to say the past up to this point is now completely off limits, we've paid a horrible price for it. Mm -hmm. And I simply, in my little platform, on this podcast and on my blog, won't tolerate it. And I won't tolerate liberal allies who tell me to be quiet about it. These are our friends now. We can trust them now. Because I listen to their fucking podcast and they're going right back to their old habits. Both mm -hmm. siderism is making a big comeback all over the all over our allies' anti-Trump right. And deficit scolding. Deficit scolding. Oh, there's all this money. Yeah. Even Joe Walsh. Just the blurb of his podcast. Yes, Joe Walsh has a podcast. And Joe Walsh said, I was part of this. I did this and I'll spend the rest of my life atoning for it. I appreciate that. But mm -hmm. the blurb of his podcast today is, <laughs> is how about we, we all retreat into our bubbles. Conservatives go to Fox News. Liberals go to MSNBC. And nobody ever gets any smarter. And like, you know what? It's wired into their brains. He's not watching MSNBC no. if he thinks it's liberals on there. No, no they're not. <laughs> Nicole Wallace is not a fucking liberal. And all the little yeah. baby ducks that followed her in the door are mm -hmm. not liberals. And all of the MSNBC attempts at putting more conservatives on the air and advertising that people might think we're a conservative. We put so many conservatives on the air. Nobody, and I, I stress this regarding the anniversary of Crooks and Liars. Mm -hmm. At no point in the last 17 years has John Amato hired Hugh Hewitt or right. Michael Steele to nope. balance out the message. Nope. Because that's not what we do. We're, we're in a war. It's a very long one. And it's not helpful to be, to give away prime positions in the media where you frame the debate to people who have made their living up until five minutes ago shitting all over everything I believe in and still think everything I believe in is bullshit. They just want to get far enough away from Trump where they can go back to doing what they used to do, which is calling liberals assholes and fools and crackpots. And that's the end of my five minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'll trim it down to a lean five. I know you will. You're right. You're right. But anyway, <laughs> um, I just wonder if it isn't the nature of television in general and cable mm -hmm. news in particular to focus only on the present because you, you're you always in a news cycle that you have to, you know, mm -hmm. do the, the sound bite to get the news in, whatever agenda you have. But then there's outlets like Politico that are talking about now about the controversial former president as if yeah. the past four years didn't happen and we don't remember. Right. And, and uh, I do remember. <laughs> well, and that's the thing about the Orwellian nature of this is yeah. if it were just, um, we begin the, we begin the day brand new every day with a blank slate. Okay. That's right. horrifying, but it's not, mm -hmm. it's, it's, but the fact that the Republican conservative media will unhesitatingly reach into the past and bring up Bill Clinton and bring up Jimmy Carter and bring up Ronald Reagan and bring up any and all the bullshit scandals they invented around Barack Obama, mm -hmm. whatever they need mm -hmm. to trade on that shit. They have, a, they have what Orwell uh, called double think, which is mm -hmm. they can forget the past, but then they remember selective pieces of it, usually all the lies they told 10 years ago. Whatever they need to bolster today's lies, and then they could forget. Robert, that, Robert Bird. They remember Robert oh yeah. Bird was a Klansman when Robert he was Bird a child. Was a when he was twelve <laughs> years old. What about that, Limtard? Huh? What about yeah, that? Right. And right, it's right. it's pointless to try to reason with people who have said, "I don't give a shit about facts. My, I, I'm here to make you cry." So, yeah. and but but make you cry. I think that's a really critical question mm -hmm. because I think this erasure of the past is denying the reality of trauma. Mm -hmm. for a lot of people who may or may not be political. 
Yeah. The election of Donald Trump was traumatic for yes. a lot of people. Yes, it was. Um, the the fact that our health care system, as bad as it is, hung from John McCain's thumb. Yep. And was, you know, everyone was just waiting to see if they were going to have health insurance tomorrow. I remember your brother asking you mm-hmm. when he was over visiting us at the time. So do I just lose my health insurance tomorrow if, if the vote goes that way? Mm-hmm. Is it all over? And mm-hmm. I just have to be without? Because... To, I mean, he's not somebody who bathes in it every day. Right. He has a job and a and a family and and other things to do that aren't related to blo- political blogging. And he just wanted to know, you know, how does this work? And the fact that it was one vote in the Senate that made it possible for us to continue with the very flawed Affordable Care Act, uh, you know, that's traumatic for people. It is. It is. And and then, and then we get into COVID and the absolute failure of the federal government under Republican rule mm-hmm. to protect us right. from death, from 600,000 deaths. And it wasn't, um, I, in this article, in this post from, from long ago, I point mm-hmm. out that if you're, if you're a screw up because you're not in possession of all the facts, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. But if your party makes it a point to run screaming away from the facts, that's another thing entirely. And that's what they mm-hmm. have done. That's what, the whole Trump administration was about. It was about lying about everything, including mm-hmm. COVID. Right. And then then shrugging it off and saying, well, we'll blame other people. We'll blame the states. We'll blame China. As long as me personally am never to blame for anything. I, right. Going to the hospital, having extraordinary, you know, heroic measures to, to get him healthy and then turns right around and, and is exactly who he was before he went in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I get the fact that it was traumatic. The election of Trump, but for seventy something million people, it was it was a, a victory. Wonderful, it was great, yeah. and it it's traumatic for two groups of people. For one, the overwhelming number of people, liberals, lefties, Democrats, whatever, moderates, whatever you want to call us, they're in the party. It was mm-hmm. incredibly traumatic to see not just anyone get elected, you know, anyone because we're used to we're used to losing presidential elections every other you know every other cycle, mm-hmm. to lose to an absolute monster, a bloody toothed lying lunatic mm-hmm. and racist have, racist sexual offender yeah yeah and ha, and and those being the points which the republican party loved about him and cheered him and cheered yeah. and it was traumatic for a smaller group of people who were who were in the media and who were the yeah. who were the acela corda republicans who were the david brooks republicans who'd been lying to us for years that the republican party is just a normal political party they would never do anything crazy like this don't worry it's going to be rubio and when yeah. it wasn't Rubio and it wasn't Hillary and, and Donald Trump was being sworn in, these guys didn't know what the fuck to do. But yeah. they knew that it wasn't their fault and they knew it, that something had gone wrong in the universe. But the thing they should have learned and none of them did was, no, you were wrong. You were wrong. You mm-hmm. were given every opportunity. You were literally paid to do one fucking thing and that is tell America what's going on in politics. And you lied and you lied and you lied and you lied. And you lied. And now your lies have caught up and the people you, who told you you were lying turned out to be right. And they couldn't handle it. They could mm-hmm. not. I have not heard a single fucking never Trumper say, you know what? The left was right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe Nicole Wallace said it once, but I've never heard any of them own up to the fact. I've heard them make excuses. I've heard them lie. I've heard them say that what, the liberals made the Republican Party racist. I've heard them yep. say that it all started back then. I've heard them say, well, there weren't any racists when I was in the party. But they've just yep. – I, I didn't know what was happening because I lived in Boston. I lived in Massachusetts. And who knows? No, Massachusetts doesn't know anything. But I've never heard any of them own up to the fact that, A, they were wrong, B, they were warned, and C, we warned them. And we were right mm-hmm. and they were wrong. And I can't move past that because if you made your living shitting on liberals for 30 years and now you're making your living pretending that you never had anything to do with it and you dominate the media, I have a real big problem with you being there. And, and, and fast forward to today, to today mm-hmm. when a backbencher Ohio Republican congressman tweets, Liz Cheney is a Democrat. Which leads us to our news roundup. <laughs> the House voted to establish a 13-member committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the Capitol. That day, January 6th, was one of the darkest days in American history, Nancy Pelosi said before the vote, and she was damn right. On the other side of the aisle, Kevin McCarthy threatened to strip GOP members of committee assignments if they accepted an offer from Pelosi to serve on the 1-6 commission. 
And uh, Liz Cheney accepted an offer to, from Pelosi to serve on the 1 6 Commission. <laughs> and this backbencher Ohio Republican tweeted Liz yeah. Cheney is a Democrat. He's a Democrat. And I think you're of the same mind as me. You don't have to be because I love you. And, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm wrong more than I'm right. But there are people who think Liz Cheney is a Democrat. You, you and I both know Republicans who flip on anyone the minute they say anything negative about the yeah, GOP. Right, They're right. absolute, you know, moron soldiers in, in the mm-hmm. Joe Leader's army. And then there are the people who said, Liz Cheney's a hero. Yeah. And she's neither. She's a monster. She's a bloodthirsty Cheney monster. She her, her politics are fucked. Everything she believes is terrible. And this one thing she was right about and has stood well, by and when her she, when she uh you know, we have a running joke in our house. I say it all the time mm-hmm. that when, because when she uh, withdrew from running for the Senate uh-huh. from Wyoming, uh, her letter to her supporters started with as a mother and a patriot. Yeah. And uh, this morning you and I were talking to one another about this. Liz Cheney is a Democrat tweet. And yeah. I said, as a motherfucker and a patriot. Yeah. And that is what she is. She's both of those things. She's, both of those She's things. enough of a patriot and believing in, word salad of America and national security mm-hmm. and so forth to take a stand against her party when they lie about the insurrection against the government. Absolutely. And that makes her a patriot in mm-hmm. this context. She's also, every suit she wears to the one six commission was bought and paid for with the blood of Iraqi civilians because her father Light us into war. The reason Guantanamo Bay prison is still open is Liz Cheney. That's why. And so she harms our national security on a regular basis yeah. with her warmongering and her fake uh, national security, quote unquote, uh, harping. She believes that democracy should be destroyed the Cheney way, not the Trump way. <laughs> and, and that it belongs to the elites within the party. Right. And she's more than willing to sell out her gay sister to keep the uh, evangelical groups voting yeah. with the R party. But when this was a bridge too far for her and good for her. I yeah. mean, now this is a gift to Nancy Pelosi because right. it's a bipartisan commission. Yay. I love bipartisan. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, right. Um, moving on. News organizations are currently upgrading their software with a macro that lets reporters insert the phrase in a six to three decision today, the United States Supreme Court using a single keystroke. Yeah. And here's an example. In a six to three decision today, the United States Supreme Court upheld voting restrictions in Arizona in a decision that could make it harder to challenge other voting measures put in place by Republican lawmakers following last year's elections. This reversed a lower court ruling in deciding that Arizona's limits on who can return early ballots for another person and its refusal to count ballots cast in the wrong precinct are not racially discriminatory when they patently are. Here's another example in a 6-3 to three decision today. The United States Supreme Court's invalidated a California rule that requires charitable organizations that solicit donations to disclose a list of their contributors to the state attorney general. Uh, and this has... Uh, ramifications for political dark money being mm-hmm. perfectly okay. Yeah. Well, and we know that Republicans are are a hundred percent cool with dark money. As much yeah. as possible, as dark as possible, they 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 pack the Supreme Court to guarantee that this floodgate stays propped open. Uh Joe Manchin, ever heard of him? Agreed to support the use of budget reconciliation to pass a broader tax and social spending bill. Now that's just right now. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Manchin said he believes in a Democrat-only infrastructure bill can be done. Bill Cosby was released from prison after his sexual assault conviction was overturned by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court on a technicality. Yeah. This is what every dirty... Very much injustice. This is what every Dirty Harry movie starts off. He got off on a technicality. I'm done with this. Well, this is is horrible for women. It's horrible, yeah. He wants to come forward. He's a monster. And, yeah. And they let him loose. And... And it's a miracle he wasn't pardoned by Donald Trump. I was going to say it's a miracle he went to prison at all, given his standing in certain circles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Someone on the Internet today said of Donald uh, Donald Rumsfeld being dead. You go to hell with the soul you have now, not the soul you might want at some future time. (laughs) (laughs) Don Rumsfeld, the architect of the decades long wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, is dead. 
Uh, Rumsfeld was a congressman from Illinois' 13th district, a seat now held by our very own Rodney Davis. Wow. And he was the secretary of defense under both Gerald Ford and George W. Bush. He has never expressed any regret for helping lie us into a war in Iraq, which cost the U.S. $700 billion and counting and 4,400 American lives. Here's a fun fact. In 2004, human rights groups and a bipartisan Senate committee said Rumsfeld should face criminal charges for his decisions that had led to the abuse of Iraqi detainees at Abu Ghraib prison and terrorism suspects at Guantanamo Bay. I didn't realize that we lived in Don Rumsfeld's district. Yeah. I had never known that. Yep. Don wow. Rumsfeld is from here, baby. This is Trump Man. country, and it hasn't changed one fucking iota. Nope. nope. Maricopa County, Arizona, is now on the hook for the cost of replacing all of the voting equipment that was turned over to the fake auditors hired by the Republican-controlled state Senate to conduct its fake audit of 2020 presidential election results. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors said that because the equipment had been placed, quote, under the control of persons not certified to handle election equipment, unquote, the county would, quote, not use the subpoenaed election equipment in any future election, unquote, because it could, quote, pose, it could pose a risk to free and fair elections. Duh. Duh. And that's the uh, success story that Republicans are going to try to replicate in other states around the country. Uh, the Trump Organization and one of its top executives, Allen, who knows where everybody is buried, Weisselberg, has been indicted in connection with a tax investigation. Also mentioned- An unindicted in, co-conspirator number one is in those papers. Yeah, Don, really, Donald Trump is unindicted co-conspirator in so many different stories. I don't. Mm -hmm. He's like a, a character actor in old Westerns. He just shows up in all the indictments, you know? Hey, it's that guy who's always indicted, but un, you know, unindicted and a co-conspirator. Um, undercover video has revealed Exxon's anti-climate campaign strategy. Keith McCoy, a senior ExxonMobil lobbyist, was caught on tape talking openly about how the oil company uses its political clout to stop climate action. Quote, did we aggressively fight against some of the science? Yes, the Exxon lobbyist said during a covertly filmed job interview recorded by Greenpeace's UK investigative platform. Quote, did we join some shadow groups to work against some of the early efforts? Yes, that's true. McCoy said in the video, which was published Wednesday by the UK's Channel 4, Quote, but there's nothing illegal about that. We're looking out for our investments. We're looking out for our shareholders. And fuck the planet. And in local news, last month the Republican Party here paid notorious lunatic and mob insider Candace Owens to keynote their annual Lincoln Dinner fundraiser. In contrast, this month, <laughs> the Sangamon County Democrats have invited one of Georgia's two new senators, John Ossoff, to keynote their fundraiser. Yeah. Quite a, quite a contrast. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is a Siamese kitty named Breezy Bay. Now, you might remember, Drift Glass, we had a uh, bearded dragon lizard. We did. As Internet pet named Pancake a little while ago. Yes. Um, Breezy Bay is the little brother from another mother of Pancake. They're a blended family, as Aww. as we are, Aww. you know, That's sweet. both in their forever homes. Mm -hmm. And Breezy Bay is an adorable cat. Uh, and, of course, Breezy Bay eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Breezy Bay, he's really cute, at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, cat, pet, pancake, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> send that bearded dragon picture. We love animals. Send them to our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. That's where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag jail to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, 
buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. We are also thinking about those of you who live on the coast and are dealing with heat this this week. Yes, indeed. Um, we want you to know you're in our thoughts mm-hmm. and uh, hope, hope you get out of it uh, and are able to stay cool. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties think Loki's sacred timeline is terrible and needs to be ended, but probably won't be due to some future 6-3 to three decision by the United States Supreme Court. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.